Right, uh, good evening and uh, a good uh, St Andrew's Day to everybody. Uh, I want to do another Robert Service poem. Hang on a wee minute. Aye, fine. This camera seems to be playing up as well, so zooming in and out and going in and out of focus and stuff. Never mind, you don't need to watch it, you just need to listen. Robert Service poem. Um, one I've wanted to do for a while, The Ballad of How Macpherson Held the Floor. Again, this is set in the Yukon during the gold rush. So cast your mind back. <clears throat> right, said President McConaughey to Treasurer McCall, we ought to have a piper for the next St Andrews Ball. Yon squawking saxophone gives me the syncopated gripes. I'm sick of jazz. I want to hear the skirling of the pipes. Alas, it's true, said Tom McCall, the young folk of today are foxtrot mad and dinna ken a real fair strass bay. Now what we want's a kilty lad primed up with mountain dew to strut the floor at supper time and play a lilt or two. In all the north there's only one, of him I've heard them speak. His name is Jock McPherson and he lives on Boulder Creek. An old time hard rock miner and a wild and wastrel loon who spends his nights in glory playing peabrooks to the moon. I'll seek him out. Beyond a doubt, on next St Andrew's night, we'll proudly hear the pipes to cheer and charm our appetite. Oh, lads were neat and lassies sweet to grace St Andrew's ball, but there was none so full of fun as Treasurer and McCall. And as Maloney's ragtime band struck up the newest hit, he smiled a smile behind his hand and chuckled, wait a bit. And so, with many a Celtic snort, with malice in his eye, he watched the merry crowd cavort till supper time drew nigh. Then gleefully he seemed to steal and sought the nugget bar, wherein there sat the tartan chill, as lonely as a star. A huge and hairy healingman, as hearty as a breeze, a glass of whisky in his hand, his bagpipes on his knees. Drink doon your dock and Doris Jock, cried Treasurer McCall. The time is right to up and pipe, they wait you in the hall. Gird up your loins and grit your teeth, and here's a pint of hooch. To mind you of your native heath, just put it in your pooch. Play on and on for all you're worth, you'll shame us if you stop. Remember you're of Scottish birth, keep piping till you drop. I though a bunch of willy boys should bluster and implore, for the glory of the Highlands, lad, you've got to hold the floor. The dancers were at supper, and the tables groaned with cheer, when President McConaughey exclaimed, What do I hear? He thinks it's like a chanter, and it's coming from the hall. It's Jock McPherson tuning up, cried Treasurer McCall. So up they jumped, with shouts of glee, and gaily hurried forth. Said they, we never thought to see a piper in the north. I all the lads and lasses bra went buzzing out like bees, and Jock McPherson there they saw, with red and rugged knees. Full six feet four he strode the floor, a grizzled sun of sky, with glory in his whiskers, and with whiskey in his eye. With scalp and stride and Scottish pride, he towered above them all. And is he no a bonny sight, said Treasurer McCall, while President McConaughey was fairly daft with glee, and there was jubilation in the Scottish committee. But the dancers seemed uncertain, and they signified their doubt by dashing back to eat as fast as they had darted out, and someone raised a question twixt the coffee and the cakes, does the piper walk to get away from all that noise he makes? Then reinforced with fancy food, they slowly trickled forth and watched, in patronising mood, the piper of the north. Proud, proud was Jock McPherson, as he made his bagpipes skirl, and he set his sporran swinging, and he gave his kilts a whirl. And President McConaughey was jumping like a flea, and there was joy and rapture in the Scottish committee. Just let them have their saxophones with syncopated squall. We're having heaven's music now, said Treasurer McCall. But the dancers waxed impatient, and they rather seemed to fret for Maloney and the jazz of his Hibernian quartet. Yet little wrecked the piper as he swung with head on high, lamenting with McCrimmon on the heather hills of sky. With a hailing passion in his heart, he held the centre floor. I, Jock McPherson, played as he had never played before. Maloney's Irish melodists were sitting in their place, and as Maloney waited, there was wonder in his face. T'was sure the gorgeous music. Golly, wouldn't it be grand if he could get Macpherson as a member of his band? 
but the dancers moped and mumbled as around the room they sat. We paid to dance, they grumbled, but we cannot dance to that. Of course we're not denying that it's really splendid stuff, but it's mighty satisfying, don't you think we've had enough? You've raised a pretty problem, answered Treasurer McCall, for on St Andrew's night you can the piper rules the ball. Said President McConaughey, you've said a solemn thing. Tradition holds him sacred and he's got to have his fling. But soon, no doubt, he'll weary out. Have patience, by the way. That's right, respect the piper, said the Scottish committee. And so Macpherson stalked the floor and fast the moments flew, till half an hour went past and irritation grew and grew. Then the dancers held a council, and with faces fiercely set, they held Maloney head in his Hibernian quartet. It's long enough we've waited. Come on, Mike, play the blues. And Maloney hesitated, but he didn't dare refuse. So banjo and piano and guitar and saxophone contended with the shurman or the chanter and the drone. And the women's ears were muffled, so infernal was the din. But Macpherson was unruffled, for he knew that he would win. Then two bright boys jazzed round him, and they sought to play the clown. But Macpherson jolted sideways and the sassin axe went down. And as if it was a signal where a wild and angry roar, the gates of wrath were riven. Yet Macpherson held the floor. I amid the rising tumult till he strode with head on high, with ribbons gaily streaming, yet with battle in his eye. Amid the storm they gathered, still he stalked with Highland pride, while President and Treasurer sprang bravely to his side. And with her an indignation that was glorious to see, around him in a body rang the Scottish committee. Their teeth were clenched with fury, their eyes with anger blazed. Yamana touched the piper, was the slogan that they raised. The, then blows were struck and men went down, yet mid their eyes and fray, Macpherson towered in triumph, and he never ceased to play. Alas, his faithful followers were but a gallant few, and faced defeat, although they fought with other skills they knew. For President McConaughey was seen to slip and fall, and o'er his prostate body stumbled Treasurer on McCall. And as their foes with triumph roared and leaguered them about, it looked as if their little band would soon be counted out. For eyes were black and noises red, yet on that field of gore, as resolute as Highland Rock, Macpherson held the floor. Maloney watched the battle, and his brows were bleakly set, while with him paused and panted his Abernian quartet. For sure it is an evil spite, and break into the heart, for an Irishman to watch a fight, and no be taken part. Then suddenly on high he soared, and tightened up his belt, and shall we see them crush, he roared, a brother in the Celt, a fellow artiste, needs a raid, come on boys, take a hand. Then down into the melee dashed Maloney, and his band. Now though it was St Andrew's Ball, yet men of every race that bow before the great god Jazz were gathered in that place, yet there were those who grunt ya yeah, ya, yeah, and those who squeak wee oui, wee, oui. likewise Dutch, Dago, Swede, Finn, Polak and Portuguese. Yet like ripe grain before the gale, that national hotchpotch went down before the fury of the Irish and the Scotch. I though they closed their gaping ranks and rallied to the fray, to the shamrock and the thistle went the glory of the day. You should have seen the carnage and the drooling light of dawn, yet mid the scene of slaughter, Jock Macpherson playing on. The wall lay low about him, yet held his head on high, and he piped as if he stood upon the collar crags of sky. His face was grim as granite, and no favour did he ask, The weary were his mighty lungs, and empty was his flask. And when a fallen foe wailed out, Say, when will you have done? Macpherson grinned and answered, Hoots, she's only half begun. Aye, though his hands were bloody and his knees were gay with gore, a grampy and a highland pride, Macpherson held the floor. And still in Yukon Valleys, where the silent peaks looked down, they tell of how the piper was invited up to town. And he went and kilted glory, and he piped before them all, but he wouldn't stop his piping till he busted up the ball. Of that taromic scrap they speak, and how the fight went on, we sally and we rally till the breaking of the dawn. And how the piper towered like a rock amid the fray, and the battle surged about him, but he never ceased to play. Aye, by the lonely campfire still, they tell the story of how the Sassanac was vanquished, and 
how McPherson held the floor. Happy St Andrew's night. Cheers. Grand. <laughs>